Center. Um, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this fight because of the catch weight. All right, we all know Miguel Cotto hasn't fought in a year. He hasn't fought since he beat Sergio Martinez for that middleweight crown, and he doesn't want to fight Triple G. He did not fight uh, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, they were trying to set that fight up. That didn't go down. So. Miguel Cotto right now is not really anybody's favorite guy. You know, you guys know that's my favorite boxer and all that. But, um, you know, I really don't understand this fight. Uh, and the catch weight that's involved at 157. I mean, that's the new thing now. I already made a video discussing the catch weight thing. And Miguel Cotto is definitely one of the top enforcers when it comes to the... Uh, the catch weight because he is one of boxers biggest money makers okay uh he really believes in the whole a side b side thing we saw what happened in sergio martinez fight this is pretty much all because of what happened with manny pacquiao and floyd and how they had the demands over him so now whenever it's his fight he makes the rules he sets up all the rules um now as far as the fight is concerned i'm taking miguel Cotto to win this fight they can win a uh, competitive. The, the, I think it's for us, it could be some competitive moments in there. Uh, I think it's not going to be a great fight, but it should be pretty good. Um, I think he's going to win a, a unanimous decision against uh, Danny Gill. Um, even at one sixteen, even with Gill being a bigger guy at middleweight, I, I just don't really see him having anything that is going to get Cotto's attention. He's not a big puncher at the weight. Okay, um, he's not really super athletic. He moves well. He's a good boxer. He's definitely a solid boxer. But there's nothing in his style that Cotto has, hasn't seen before. And he really doesn't have the power, you know. Cotto's been hurt before. Cotto um, is not the most durable fighter ever since, especially ever since he, uh, you know, got beat down by the Margarito in that first fight. You know, he cuts easy and everything, but... There's nothing there for Daniel Gill uh, besides his size, his, his size advantage. He really doesn't have much for Cotto. Um, two type of guys that I see Cotto lose to, or well, with the exception of Pacquiao. Well, you could say you could put him in his category. Boxers like when he lost to Floyd, when he lost to Floyd and, and Austin Trout. These are guys that, for the most part of the fight, or for the majority of the fight, they had great jabs. They had great jabs. They, 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 they kept the distance from Cotto. You know, Cotto likes to come in, throw some good left hooks. You know, he's a good body puncher. Um, he has a good jab too, as well. But Cotto doesn't really commit to the jab like the way Austin Trout and uh, Floyd was doing. You know, these guys were constantly changing levels on him, and and um, going to the body as well. Know, shooting that jab to the body or that straight, you know, Floyd was shooting that straight right. Uh, Trout was the southpaw, he was shooting that straight left. He was just keeping space in between them. And they were doing, especially Trout, it was more volume with them. And it, it forced Cotto to have to try to get inside and do work on the inside because on the outside he was just getting out box. Um, and I don't see that in Gil. You know, Gil has a decent jab, but he doesn't really have something that's going to keep Cotto off him, you know, and then, you know, Cotto, I've seen Cotto lose to guys that overwhelmed him, you know, if you pressure him enough, like the way Margarito did, and Pacquiao, and um, even when uh, Cotto, I mean, he ended up winning the fight, but when he fought uh, Joshua Cloudy, you know, that was a fight that they could have gave to Cloudy, you know, Cloudy did a lot of work on him because of the pressure, just like he did against Zab Judah, uh, those are not, those are, those are not things that I see in Daniel Gill. You know, Daniel Gill is just a solid boxer. I mean, he's definitely a top 10 uh, middleweight. And you can even argue before, you know, the, the most recent losses that he might have been a top five.
but he's nowhere on the level of the uh, fighters that Cotto has faced. I even would think that uh, Austin Trout is a better fighter than him at 154. You know, I just don't think Daniel Gill is that good of a boxer, and he doesn't really have a he doesn't pack a big punch neither. So I really don't see any threat there from Daniel Gill. Now, as far as the weight thing is concerned, catchweight is at 157. Now, I've seen all these things where Cotto's like, well. I seen a couple articles on boxing scene saying that if if he can't make the catch weight, we have backups and stuff. I, I don't know how that works with the contract. Um, I believe Miguel Cotto is fighting Daniel Gill, whether or not he makes weight or not. Okay, as far as fines is concerned, um, yeah, I mean, of course he might get fined. Daniel Gill might get fined if he. Uh, doesn't come in within the 157 catchweight agreement. But as long as he's not fighting over 160, uh, everything should be fine. You know, I don't see why Miguel Cotto would have a replacement for Daniel Gill. Um, he's supposed to be fighting Daniel Gill at the end of the day. Um, one thing for Daniel Gill, to his advantage, what I think he needs to do is not kill himself. Just like I said with Sean Porter with Adrian Broder, um, try to definitely make 160 because that's the weight that you're supposed to fight. That's the limit that you're supposed to fight regardless. But um, as far as 157, you know, don't kill yourself to make 157, but try to make it 158, 158 and a half, whatever it is, you know. Try to, uh, at least try to make the catch weight, but don't kill yourself for doing it, you know. Um, you still got to fight that day at the end of the day. And I believe there's also a rehydration clause, too. I think it's of 165, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what Gil can really do to win this fight because, you know, there's a lot of there's other fights coming up that they're trying to prepare for Cotto. They want the, the Canelo fight. Um, that's supposed to be already set in the works for September or whatever date that they're going to use. And, you know, even a possible Triple G, you know, if, if tri Triple G agreed to the catch weight. Uh, I just don't see Gil winning, and if it's a close fight, I don't see um, Miguel Cotto. I don't see them, the judges, ever giving Gil this fight. You know, I, I think his chances of winning are slim, and, and I don't expect Gil to knock Cotto out. You know, Gil hasn't knocked anyone out, or not anyone I've seen lately. I know he fought Jared Fletcher recently. They went 12 rounds, and, um, you know, Billy Joe Sanders knocked out Fletcher and so did Danny Jacobs. I, it's just even when he hurt uh, Darren Barker, you know, he didn't knock him out or anything. Darren Barker still got up and, and continued fighting and won that fight. Um, Gil has some good wins in there, but he hasn't had anything. He would have to knock Cotto out because as far as skills is concerned, or skills are concerned, Cotto got him and um, experience and everything. So I just don't see anything for Gil. I think Cotto's going to win a unanimous decision. I'd be impressed if Cotto ends up stopping him, but I don't think he's going to stop him. I know uh, Triple G did, but before that, Gil never been stopped. And Gil has good legs. That's one thing you can say about Gil. Gil moves pretty well. I thought that was going to be an issue for Golovkin at that stage, but it really wasn't. You know, It really wasn't because Golovkin is good at cutting off the ring. But... um. I, yeah, I just don't see uh, Gil have anything for Cotto. So anyway, um, that's my prediction. Cotto by unanimous decision. Hopefully we don't have no issues or anything with this whole weight situation going on. You know, I, I seriously doubt Gil comes in and make that that 157 be below or uh, at 157. I really doubt it. I, I see Gil coming in at 158 and a half, 159, something like that. So that's that's how I feel about that. All right. So anyway, um, make sure you guys subscribe and leave comments.